Evers sworn in as governor, Sheboygan police investigate car break-ins, Steakhouse bandit in court for sentencing Thursday. These stories and more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for January 7th, 2019. A plea and sentencing hearing is planned for this afternoon for the Plymouth woman who reportedly sexually assaulted a teenage boy at a 4th of July party last year. Tori Ann Mason is expected to appear before Judge Kent Huffman, and she was charged with a felony sexual assault of a child after the 14-year-old said that she exposed her breasts and groped the teen at a party. Mason told investigators that she was just playing around and that she had been drinking earlier that evening before the incident. She is facing up to 40 years in prison if she is found guilty. Sheboygan police say they are investigating a number of car break-ins in Sheboygan's south side. It happened Wednesday night in the Farnsworth Roosevelt area and police do not have anyone in custody yet, but they are asking people to remember to take their valuables out of their vehicles and lock their car doors when they are parked. If you have any information, you are asked to please call the Sheboygan Police Department. The Grafton man arrested for breaking into Jake's roundabout steakhouse in Sheboygan last July will be in court for a sentencing hearing Thursday morning. Bobby Lee was charged with felony burglary after breaking into the restaurant, destroying glass, cash registers, a jukebox, and other items. The criminal complaint says that Lee propped open the taps at the bar so that they would stay running while he made himself a steak and ate at the bar. Lee is facing more than 12 years in prison, and he will be sentenced by Judge Kent Huffman. A new report says one in five high schoolers in Wisconsin have tried an electronic cigarette. The Wisconsin Department of Health Services says back in 2014, just 8% of students had vaped, and now it is at 20%. Health managers are worried about the health effects of vaping, and they say no one knows for sure what those clouds of vapor do to young people. Vaping products cannot be used by those under 18 years old in Wisconsin, and there is a growing concern that some of the flavors and vaping products are designed to appeal to underage users. If you are looking for a new job in the new year, the state has some excellent resources on hand to help you out. Amy Hansman with the State Bureau of Job Services says there are more jobs available than people to fill them, and that is an excellent starting point for anyone looking to get a better career. Literally thousands of opportunities available, as well as resources that can help you be a well-informed job seeker. Hansman says the Job Center of Wisconsin offers up access to up-to-date labor market information that can help you direct to improve your position in your current job. Maybe you want to negotiate a little bit higher wage. If I complete this training, what can I expect for a starting wage for a new type of position? She says the Job Center of Wisconsin website can help you find a position you might not have known you were qualified for just by using the skills you already have. You can do a skills match and it will run a quick job search to see what sort of position is out there. The state's Job Center offers up assistance in writing resumes, finding a new position, and finding out if the skills you have might get you a job you weren't expecting. You can find out more online at jobcenterofwisconsin.com. A local organization is stopping its efforts to resettle refugees in the Madison area. Lutheran Social Services will no longer be providing resettlement services to people coming into the country. 
Ken Braun, who runs the LSS Open Doors for Refugees program, tells WKOW-TV that the high cost of housing and difficulties finding accommodations for refugees makes it impossible to continue. Federal resettlement policies have also had an effect on these services. LSS will continue working with those who are already living in Madison for up to five years. Jewish Social Services tells Wisconsin State Journal that their resettlement program will continue. And finally, the Tony Evers era has begun. The Democrat took the oath of office alongside four elected officials Monday at the Capitol in Madison. Also sworn in were Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes, Attorney General Josh Call, Secretary of State Doug Lafollette, and State Treasurer Sarah Godlewski. Barnes used his inaugural address to speak of bringing the state together and creating opportunities for those who might not otherwise have them, saying a child's path in life should not be determined by their zip code. Evers spoke of working for Wisconsin values and prioritizing education, saying what's good for Wisconsin's children is good for the state. He also made funding for roads and other infrastructure a priority, which he spoke about at length during the campaign process. The 46th governor of Wisconsin also called for kindness and respect in the political process. Attorney General Call promised to make the state safer by working with lawmakers to craft legislation that would prevent another backlog of untested sexual assault kits. He also outlined a plan for a red flag law, which he says would allow family members or police to go directly to a judge to ask for someone to be immediately disarmed if they are a legitimate threat to the public or to themselves. Call also called for more funding for mental health professionals in schools. And the other constitutional position, Secretary of Department of Public Infrastructure, was not sworn in. Evers named Carolyn Stanford Taylor to that post last week, and she will finish out the term Evers was elected to and will be up for election in April of 2021. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next time for another recap of our local news on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.